Hi there guys, so in this video we're gonna be taking a look at how to debug uh, a WordPress plugin or a theme in WordPress or in general how to debug uh, a specific part of code or an error in WordPress. So I have a few plugins here that we'll be uh, taking a look into and how they can be useful in debugging uh, in WordPress. So the first plugin we have is this WP debug plugin. Um, it's called the debug and it's by the Sony Now team. As you can see, I have it activated. We can go back to the settings page. Uh, there is also a settings link here directly on the plugins page. Let's click on that. And you can see here. So what this does in this settings page it, as it has a, a few check boxes, which we can toggle on and uh, have the default WordPress uh, um, constants enabled and which will make the error reporting, debug log, a debug log and uh, error display, etc., available to us. So uh, I have it enabled by default, but let me just go through each of them line by line. So the first one here is enable error reporting. What this does is uh, defines the WP debug constant, and uh, this constant is what is responsible for basically logging any data on the front end or anywhere on your WordPress site, wherever it is. Um, occurring. So the second one is the WP debug log, which is uh, how you get a debug log specifically if you have, um, suppose you have a long stack trace which you want to look into an error which is being occurred from uh, one place to another and then the, basically the stack trace of the whole log. So for that you will enable this WP debug log and then there's a WP debug display which is responsible uh, for uh, displaying it in the HTML of the markup. Uh, so what this does enable error reporting when we discuss WP debug, this enables just the reporting part and then it could uh, display on the very top of the page and it won't be in the HTML part. So it won't be very aligned to your content and may, and may not display on the front end, it will be just visible in the source. So this is where this WP de debug display comes in. And then this one script debug is what is responsible for maybe in a plugin when you are debugging um, a code, a file, uh, a code in part of a file such as JavaScript file. And then in most times in plugins, JavaScript files are minified. And then uh, those minified files are always uh, stacked up in a single line. All the code in it are, are stacked up in a single line. So the debugging is not really an option there. And uh, most times these plugins also have a way to debug these files and that is where script debug comes in. When you define, when you toggle this on via this plugin, it uh, defines this constant to true and then what that helps in do, on doing in those plugins is that enables the source file for that minified file. And then each part of the code will be in its separate line and then you'll be able to easily debug that part of the code where the error is occurring from. And then this uh, last one is save queries that is, is responsible for basically saving all the queries in the, uh, that is being called from the DB in a specific uh, array and which you can later access in the WBDB variable. That is the global WB variable. So all this uh, information which I just explained is also available in debug debugging in WordPress, this dev hub page. I'll link this in the video description. Uh, such as you can see WP debug, there's WP debug display, script debug, save queries, and all sorts of stuff. Uh, so this is, and this is one thing that you can look back if you want to recollect the thoughts. All right, so I have them enabled. Um, so let's let's take a quick look at how this all works. Basically, the error reporting and this debug log. So I also have a demo plugin activated, which is a bare bone demo plugin. What this does is just activates mm, a plugin with a menu page, which just echoes demo menu page. Okay, so let's go to that menu page. Here it is, demo menu page, and I am just echoing that. So for example, um, this is just echoing the demo menu page. For example, let's uh, let's run into, let's create a manual arrow, and then we'll look into that one, how that works out. So let's say we have a data variable and is an array, but 
we accidentally echoed it out. Okay. So, when we echo it out, and then when we go here, you see there's this array, uh, but it also will create an error. And when we go back in our error log, we'll see in this debugger uh, menu, we'll see that there's a stack trace, that there's an array to string conversion going on at this line number specifically on line 37. And you can also, um, in your source code, go to plugins directory and uh, in the here you will find this debug.log folder sorry debug.log file in the plugins folder and you will find the same data that is being uh, output here in this debug.log file in for some reason if you are unable to access your wp admin menu you would most likely find it in here so okay there is that and uh, that is mostly what the wp debug plugin is used for and you can also enable email notifications but that will only work if you have the uh, PHP mail enabled and then the WP mail SMTP or all those sort of uh, email related stuff set up. So for emails. Let's move on to the next plugin we have. Uh, the next plugin we have is the query monitor plugin. Uh, so what this is, is it, it has many developer tools which uh, I use as a developer all the time when I'm developing a plugin or a theme or anything in WordPress. So let's take a look into it. There isn't much uh, of a settings in this. So uh, what you can do is there's this authentication cookie that you can set or the editor you can set which you are using and then it will directly take you to that editor when the uh, error happens. So let's set uh, it to Visual Studio Code which because which we are using. And let's close this menu. Let's go back to our demo menu page. And then as you can see, uh, you must have saw uh, this when we triggered the manual error. This was blinking red. This is the query monitor menu. And this is in the admin bar. It is always visible there. You can look into each of these special feature pages. So let's first look into the PHP errors. So you see here PHP error. This is also telling us what the error is and the location of the error as well as the component, which is in this case, plugin, demo plugin. Okay. So you'll, if you will uh, toggle this, the location, it will also so show the exact uh, stack trace and even more details such as what is the function that is being called and a few more details. If you were to click on this, it will directly take us to a application such as open link. And as you can see, it took us directly to our code in a visual studio code because we set it in the settings that we are using this Visual Studio Code. You can see here's the settings toggle and yeah, Visual Studio Code. We can go back here, PHP errors. Okay, so that was uh, the uh, first PHP errors example uh, for query monitoring. But there's more to it uh, than just uh, looking at PHP errors, such as suppose when you have uh, an array and you don't know what is inside of that array and you want to just log it. And uh, that's where PHP, um, sorry, the query monitor can help you. So let's suppose we have an array. We'll just uh, fetch all the posts. And then we have many posts. And uh, we don't know how uh, the data is being uh, returned. So, okay. So what we can do is, as you can see here in the logs, uh, is, there's no data logged right now, but we can look into the logging. Uh, here it is. If you click on this, uh, it will directly bring you to this page. And you can see all the different uh, methods you have available to log the data. So there's this do action. And then there's these all kinds of types which you can define to have them color logged. Let's use QM debug in this case. Uh, I'll just copy this and then this. And the best part about it is you can just put the variable or anything that you have uh, in the second parameter of this do action and when you save it and refresh the page it'll have the data logged. as you can see all the data that was in that array is being logged here and it says debug but if you were to say it's a error it will show it as an error because that's what the color logging thing is about 
So uh, there's an other way which you can use to also log uh, these stuff, which is QM and arrow or debug. You could say anything, and then the variable on the data. Let's comment this one out, and then when you do this, and it's the same. So these are both the ways which you can use to log data in this query monitor logs. Um, so the second, uh, in this query monitor, there's this database queries as well, which will show you all the queries that is being run, run while loading the page and uh, look at the timings of each. That is really extensive and you can get into it later if you want to really do some advanced or you are doing some plugin development, which requires such database query logging. Okay, uh, the timings uh, is another extensive feature which you can look into it when you click on this link. It will take you and it will show you how the profiling and logging works in uh, Query Monitor. You can say you can uh, add this do action QM start and after running your part of the code, you can just add another action which is this and it will show you the specific amount of time it took to run that part of your code and that's how you can uh, optimize your code or anything so like that there's the logs which we just covered then there's requests for the http requests this also has request headers request uh, response headers and then the hooks in use that is responsible for the http request and then there's admin screen uh, the data for the admin screen the hooks in use that is this current, current screen current screen and then the scripts uh, feature which shows you all the scripts that is being enqueued on the page standard WordPress ways and then the style sheets uh, that is being enqueued on the page and then the books and the actions this is uh, I think the most used uh, part of the query monitor that is all the uh, hooks um, aka actions uh, in their order specific order how they are being called from the start to the finish you can also see each of the functions that is associated with each hook and then when you have associated your editor in the settings when you click on any of these it will directly take you to that file okay as you can see it directly took us to this register block core file because this was what we clicked and that's just being hooked into this uh, you know, i'm sorry in the after setup or sorry it's in the init function init hook and uh, there's a lot more to this, the query monitor, and you can look into this further. And um, yeah, that will set you up with it. So that's about it for the query monitor. And it's really helpful when you are debugging anything in WordPress. Uh, and it goes a long way when you're using these plugins side by side. I am definitely using them all the time. And that's why I'm recommending you guys here. So this third plugin, there's another, this third plugin, which is fairly new, the Sparty Ray by Sparty. Uh, and it's a premium plugin. I won't recommend it to everyone because most of the stuff this offers can also be done in uh, Query Monitor or Debug Log. But if you really want to go uh, further uh, on a smoother way, let's say, then you can use this. Let's just just download this Party Ray plugin and uh, uh, go to this myray.app and there you can download the app for where it sends the data so for example which we like we did in this uh, uh, create qm debug to display some data some part of the data this is also the same the gray plugin what it does is when you have it installed when you say for example we have the same data and let's open the plug uh, the app i have it already installed and uh, here let me just disable that and when we say ray i have the plugin installed so i have this function available and then when i say ray data it will log it to the app and when we refresh the page sure as you can see it logged the um, data in this app and it's really uh well laid out and uh, um, it has a really good user uh, developer experience for that matter you also see all the uh, data that is being available plus if it's accessible or not uh, such as you can see plus plus that is public and uh, like so and uh, yeah it's it's really good when you're debugging uh, anything or you're working on a plugin or a theme 
say creating one that's only when it's uh, uh say justifiable for that matter uh, it costs around 2410 rupees in india uh prices may differ for your country so check that out so i suppose that's it um uh, for this video that's about it for debugging in wordpress uh, i think using these plugins you can almost debug anything in wordpress if you know what you're doing and uh, maybe you um, know if you don't want to give access directly to any developer and you just want to consult someone you can use the debug log or uh, uh, any of the query monitor data to send the logs or the data to that specific developer and ask him what's wrong uh, in your uh, site so that's about it thank you for watching this video hope this wasn't too long and uh, see you in another one